Hello everyone and welcome to this Python Matplotlib library tutorial for absolute beginners. In this tutorial, I'm going to start by giving you a brief overview of what is Matplotlib library and how and why it's being used. And then I'm going to split this tutorial into two parts. So the first part is going to be focused on NumPy and more specifically, how do we, we use NumPy to create these line graphs, uh, scatter plots, then bar plots, then subplots, and then at the end histograms. And then the second part is going to be focused on how do we use pandas data frames to create again, line graphs or plots, which is the same thing, different kind of line graphs. So we have two lines here, down here, we have a combination of a bar and a line down here is a stack bar and a line down here is two bars next to each other and a line graph. Then I'm going to move into scatter plots using data frames. Uh, sorry, pandas, and then into scatter plots with legends, then into different kinds of scatter plots. If you want to follow this tutorial through by actually doing what I'm doing, I'm going to have a link in the description where you will be able to download the raw data file for the pandas data frame, which is going to be this marketing row here. And at the same link, you will be able to find exactly the same notebook with just the titles, which is the one I'm going to be using for this tutorial. So you can follow it through and one more notebook, which is going to be the final notebook with the actual code, right? So what is matplotlib? Matplotlib is a two dimensional Python library, which is used for plotting. So anything from line graphs, bar charts, histograms, scatter plots, etc., etc. It's one of the main libraries actually, along with Seaborn, which is something I'm going to be teaching in the next tutorial. So make sure you click that like button and enable notifications to know when I'm going to upload the Seaborn tutorials. So you use these libraries now to visualize the data, identify trends, and also identify outliers. Last point here is that matplotlib is compatible with both NumPy and pandas to create plots, which is something I'm going to be focusing in this tutorial. Right. Looking at the packages or libraries we will be using for this tutorial, I'm going to be using NumPy, pandas, and matplotlib as PLT. If you don't have matplotlib installed in your computer, then you can type in PIP install matplotlib into the Anaconda terminal, and then it's going to start downloading. If this is your first time using Jupyter Notebooks, then I'm going to have a link in the description where I explain how to set your Python environment up using Anacondas and Jupyter Notebooks. Right, number one, a line graph. In order to create a line graph, first I have to create an array so I can actually plot it. So I can say a equals np dot array, and in the array I'm going to pass values from one to five. If I just print this now, we can see that our array has values um, from one to five. To plot this now, I can simply say plt.plot and then in the bracket say a. However, this is not going to work. Let me just run it so you can see it returns this string. In order to actually view the uh, the graph, you can you should actually say plt.show and then bracket. And now we can see our uh, line graph, which is uh, from one all the way to five right let's say i want to have another numpy array now in the same graph so how do i do that so i can just copy the above paste it down here and then create b so our b is going to be mp dot uh, array and it's going to be a constant value of let's say two two sorry two 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 and two right so if I just, if I say plt.plot a comma b now, and let's see what this is going to return, you can see that it only returned the second array. So the two, 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 two. If I want to see both of them now, I'm going to have to do something different. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm just going to copy this again and paste it down here. I, I actually need to say plt.plot uh, a and below it, I have to say plt.plot uh, b. So if I run this now, I can see both of my arrays in the same uh, graph, in the same plot. Right, few things I want to do now. The first thing is that I want to increase the size of this plot. So to do this, I can simply say, let me just a title, increase size. I can say plt.figure. Uh, open brackets, into brackets, I can say fig size, so figure size equals, and again, open brackets and say 15 comma 10. So if I run this now, we can see that we have a bigger plot. 
let me just move these at the top because this is creating the raw data um, I, the next thing I want to do now is that I want to change the color. So how do we change the colors of A and B? We can simply say A comma C equals. So C stands for color equals and say green. It's actually uh, A green. No, oh, there we go. So A is this one. So now it's green. Or you can say co uh, color written. It still works. It's fine. Then for B, let's say we want to increase the line width, so make the line a bit bigger. So to do this, we can say B comma line uh, width equals, and let's say, yeah, correct, three, three dots, let's see. So you can see now it's thicker. So maybe let's do five, there we go. Another thing you can do is that you can actually change the line style. So let's say we want to make this a dotted line. Uh, so we can after the color or before the color it doesn't matter in which order you put it you can say line style equals and then into uh, quotes you can put uh, this is one style so it's going to be the slash and the dot or two lines let's say so let's let's actually create another field so let's create c uh, so we can uh, demonstrate both uh, line styles so we can say here c equals I'm going to copy this, paste it, say C, and then the into the numpy array, we can say uh, something like three, two, uh, four, six, five. And then we can actually plot C2. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it below. Then now I want to change this A to C. So I'm plotting C2. Uh, I want the color of C to be, let's say, red. And I want the line style of C to be two dots. So if I run this now, you can see that we have three lines, A, C, and B. We can put them into alphabetical order. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we've shown how to change the line width if we want to, and the line style if we want to do that. There are many options, by the way. If you go into the uh, documentation of Matplotlib, you can see all the line styles uh, you can change the line to. Right, the next thing we want to do now is to add a title to our graph. To add the title, all we have to do is say plt dot title, and then into brackets, into quotes, we need to name the title we want to have. So our title is going to be the rent per month summary. So I can say rent per month summary. And if I click enter now, we can see that we have this small title at the top. However, we want to make it a bit larger, so we can say font size. Uh, size equals let's say 20 so we can see now it's actually bigger and also we can say font weight uh, font uh, weight equals and let's make it bold so it's 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 um it's bold now so we can actually see the title better the next thing we want to do is to add labels to each of our lines so we actually know what each line signifies so to do this we can add the here where we said plot uh, plt dot plot a. We can add a comma after the line style or after any anywhere after a is still gonna work and say label equals and then the name sorry label equals and then the name of this graph. So color a let's say which is the green one is gonna be the rent of fy uh, twenty. Uh, we wanna do the same for b. So b is actually gonna be uh, actually C, no, C, because B is the average, so C is going to be the uh, rent for FY19, let's say, which is last year, and then for B, let's say, it's going to be the average, so we can say average rent, um, AVG rent. So if we try and press enter now, as you can see, we don't uh, kind of actually see these labels that we've added, we also have to call it. To call it, we have to say plt.legend, so we need to bring the legends. And then if I put the uh, brackets here, we can see the legends at the top right. If we don't like the location, we can actually say into brackets lock, which is location, equals, and let's say upper uh, right. I think it's, it's all lowercase, upper right. And then if I click, sorry, upper left, because we are already right. If I click enter, we can see them, they moved on the right, or we can say, let's say, uh, upper middle, click enter. 
Oh, right. So it's not middle, it's uh, upper center, maybe. So we can see we get the options here, which are actually really, really nice. So I can say this is the one I'm going to go for, the upper center. I'm just going to copy the center, paste it, run it, and we can see them in the center. Additionally, we can change again the font size or the font weight. But I'm just going to let's just change the size to maybe 15. Run. Okay. So, um, okay, let's make it upper left. So it's much easier. Right, the next thing we want to do now is to add the months into our X axis because now it's from zero, zero to five, one, all the way to four. What do we actually want to do? Because we have one, two, three, four, five data points. We want to add the five months, let's say January to May. To do this, all I have to do is say X, so PLT dot X uh, ticks and then is ticks i think yeah open brackets and then into brackets the first thing i need to specify is the range so it's zero to five so i can actually say zero comma length of a so this sorry, zero not o so this length of a or any length i use the length of b or c is actually going to give me zero to five but then i have to say range before this because i actually want the range oh my god range zero to five then i need to close this bracket of range then after the range i actually need to specify the five months so that's one two three four five close bracket close bracket so you can see each time i close the brackets we can see which bracket corresponds to which bracket so this green corresponds to the first one so here i can say uh, any five strings i want to add so january uh, february then March, then April, then May. So let's try and run this. So now we can see that we've replaced the, the zero point. What was it before? If I had the hash, uh, it's gonna uh, mark this as a commentary and not actual code. So this is what it was before, zero to four. And now we actually have uh, January, February, March, April, and May. If you don't want to see the actual months here, so the strings, and you only want to see a number, it's actually much easier to do this. We can say plt.xtx and then into square brackets specify the month. So 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then comment the previous code out and run this. So now you can see it replaced the actual strings, so the months, into numbers, which is much easier. However, if you do want to add a string so the actual uh, month you have to first specify the range as i've shown you here and then specify the strings however i think the month is actually much nicer than zero to five so i'm going to leave the first code which is january to may the next thing i want to add is to add a title in our x-axis and y-axis so we can actually see what we are displaying so we can what we have to do is say plt dot x uh, label Maybe it's labels, so let's test it. And uh, this is gonna be months. No, oops, I've spelled it wrong. Uh, label. Yeah, it worked. However, it worked on down here, not on the first one. Sometimes when you rerun uh, Matplotlib, it creates two or three graphs. So all you have to do is just run it again, and it's only gonna keep the last one, which is the correct one. So we can see this one is the months, and then our Y label going to plt dot y label uh, and this is actually going to be the rent so the rent uh, let's say dollar value click enter and now we can see the rent over there by the way if you feel that you're getting enough value out of this video please click that like button and subscribe to my channel right moving down to scatter plots now the first thing we have to do is to create our raw data so we need an x-axis and a y-axis in order to create a scatter plot in the commentary up here, I have some NumPy functions that are going to help us create that raw data from scratch. If you want to learn more about how to use NumPy, I'm going to have a link in the description where it's going to take you into my NumPy tutorial. Right, let's start by creating our A. So I'm going to say A equals MP dot uh, arrange and then, sorry, arrange and then say 30, then call A just to visualize it. What this MP arranged did, it created uh, 30 uh, numbers from zero to the number I specified 30. But because NumPy starts from zero, I, I have from zero to 29, but it's actually 30 data points. Right, creating our B now, I'm going to say B equals uh, MP dot MP dot random dot 
oh my god random dot rand int so i need a random integer numbers first i need to specify the range so i'm going to say from 0 to 30 and at the end i need to specify how many data points i need so i need 30 data points because remember a and b have too much and if i call b now uh random run it again so we can see now that this b run random dot run integer created uh, an array with 30 data points ranging from 0 to 30. and now if i want to uh, put them in a scatter plot all i have to do is say plt dot uh, scatter open bracket say a comma b this sorry comma not uh, dot a comma b remember this is still not going to work it's going to return me that string I also have to say plt.show if I actually want to see the scatter plot. So there we go. Now we see the scatter plot that we've just created from random points from A and B. By the way, each time you rerun your scatter plot, it's going to keep changing because each time you rerun it, it creates new random numbers. So bear this in mind if you don't get the same scatter plot as I am getting. Actually, you're not going to get the same scatter plot because each time we are using new random numbers in this B. Uh, array that we've created right i'm just going to copy these plots now and show you again uh, how we can change the color so i've shown this already so we can say comma c equals uh, which is c stands for color and then just say green then run this and then we can see the same scatter plot different color uh, we can do all the uh, x ticks and x labels y labels titles and legends that i've shown up here but uh, because I've shown them up here, I'm not going to do them on the scatter plot just to save some time. What I am going to show is how to change the size of the dots. So first thing we have to do is that we need to create another array, which is going to be another random array from uh, that uh, uh, 30 with 30 data points. So I'm just going to copy what I have above here, paste it up here, down here. So this S is going to create a random array ranging from 0 to 30. And then uh, after green, I can say comma S, which stands for size, equals my S, which is my new array. And then let's run this. So you can see that the, uh, the size of the dots have changed now, but it's not very clear. What we can do is increase the range, let's say 0 to 100. And now it's more obvious that we have different size of dots. Um, another thing we can try and do is that we can try and make it more of a, a correlated because now it's very sparse so we can change manipulate our b so i'm just going to copy our b now copy paste b down here and my b now i'm going to make b related to a so i'm going to say a equals uh, and then i need random numbers from 0 to 30 this might actually work so now you can see it, it's more related now as a increases b increases because I've related A with B. Right, moving down to bar plots now. The first thing we have to do, as we've done with every other plot, is to create our raw data. And because it's a bar plot, we need the a category at the x-axis and then the value in the y-axis, which is going to be the, the revenue, let's say. So I'm going to create three categories now. So I'm going to say category, category equals, and then I'm going to have three accounts. So I'm going to say account A, account B, and account C. Let me just specify it. Account A, copy this. Oh my god. Copy, paste. This is going to be my B, and then this is going to be my C. And then as a value, I'm going to have a revenue equals. Remember, we need a numpy array to make this work. So mp dot uh, array, open bracket, square bracket, and let's say 300, 500, uh, and then 700. Right. Let me just run this. It works fine. To plot it now, uh, this is where it gets a bit tricky. So any logical person would think that you would say plot dot bar open brackets and then put category and revenue. Let me just try it so you see what it does. Category and then revenue. It's going to throw me an error. It's not working because, um, well, mainly because category here has to be a range. So I actually have to put the range of the category if I want to make this work. So I need to say range. Uh, from zero to three, or I can do it differently. I can say zero, uh, sorry, range zero, and then length of uh, category, which is actually three. But let's just plot this now. Sorry, we need plt.show too, remember? So now we can actually see one, two, three categories, but now we are missing the tickets. Because it says zero, one, and two, instead of saying account A, account B, and account C. 
Now, remember how we've done it in our line graph, how we've changed the strings now with this function here, the plt.xtickers. This is exactly what we have to do. So I can just copy this, paste it down here in the plot. Uh, plt.xtickers, the first thing I need is the range. My range is going to be 0 to 3 now, not length of A, as I have it above here. And then comma, I can actually put category here. It should work instead of specifying uh, account A, account B, and account C. Actually, both should work. Let's try it out. There we go. It changed the color too. I don't know. We can actually change it manually with the color uh, function that I've shown in the other, other plots. So now we have account A, account B, and account C. Again, we can actually make this uh, uh, bar chart a bit larger, as I've shown again down here. So plt.plot figure. I can just copy it, paste it on top of my bar chart, change this to 10 to 10 maybe, so run it. So now it's a bit bigger, account A, account B, and account C. Right, the next thing we're gonna show now is how to create subplots. So subplots is smaller plots next to each other, uh, which is some sometimes very useful to do. Right, to do this, uh, we need to create our raw data, but actually I'm gonna keep the same raw data as up here, so I'm gonna copy it and paste it, uh, there we go, creating raw data. Then here in the plotting it is where I'm gonna set the figure size. So it's always good to set the figure size before creating a subplot. So I'm gonna say uh, 10 to five, so we want them a bit smaller. And then creating the bar chart, I'm just gonna copy exactly what I have up here. So this actually create the bar chart and then run it just to see uh, if we get exactly the same data, uh, sorry, exactly the same plot as we get up here, just a bit smaller. So now next to it, uh, we actually want to add two more uh, plots, which is going to be a line plot, a line graph, and a scatter plot. To do this, we have to say before the plt.bar, plt.subplot, and let's say 131. I'm not entirely sure why we do 131, 132, and 133 but it just, just put 131 there, it's gonna work. And if I copy this now, the bar chart, and paste it below, and now I change the bar to a plot, which is the actual line, and run this, okay, it's gonna be a bit tricky now. So we can see that it plotted first the bar chart, and below it, the line. However, we want the line to be next to it. This is because we have plt.show after the bar. So it, after it finished the bar, it plotted it and then it moved on. But if I remove it, it's going to appear, whoa, not on top. Oh, I need to change the subplot to 132. So it plotted it in the same. So if I run this now, we can see we have a bar chart and a line graph next to each other. And I can actually tweak these results to be, let's say, 450. Yeah, it's a bit curvy now, so it's not a straight line. Uh, also, I want to change the color so of the line. So we have uh, C equals, let's say, red. Right, nice. And then we need a scatter plot. Again, I'm going to copy uh, anything really, either the bar chart or the line graph. Copy it, paste it down here, change the plt.plot to be plt.scatter, and then change the color to be, let's say, uh, black or green. We don't have green and then uh, remove the plot.show and put it at the end. Always have it at the end, otherwise it's gonna print everything below each other. Uh, change this uh, subplot to 133. You know, you've seen what we've done now. We've accidentally created a line graph that ha also have the uh, dots in between each data point, which is actually a bit cool, but that's not what we want. There we go. So now we have subplots, so we have three plots showing exactly the same data next to each other. I can tweak the data, uh, create new data and tweak the data in each subplot, but I don't want to do that as I want to save time for this tutorial. By the way, if you feel that you're getting enough value out of this video, I would really appreciate it if you click that like button and subscribe to my channel. Right, moving down to histograms now. The reason we need to know how to uh, plot histograms is because we always need to check the distribution of our raw data just to see if it's normally distributed or if it's skewed from one direction or another direction. And the first thing we have to do is to create our raw data and I'm gonna use a numpy function called uh, random.random.n. So 
So what this random n does, the random number is going to create a norm normally distributed array of uh, 10, let's say 10,000 data points. So if I run this now, we have a um, normally distributed data set now of 10,000 numbers. And what I want to do is times this by 10, let's say to increase the sparsity and maybe add a hundred to have whole numbers. So this hundred now is going to be our mean, our average, right? to plot our histogram now all we have to do is say plt dot uh, hist sorry uh, hist. and then first thing we have to do is to specify our array our data set which is a we've just created second thing we have to specify is the bins so how many different bins i want to break this data into so i'm just going to say seven and then try and run it so plt dot show there we go. So we have a data set that with uh, 100 being the mean uh, and it's a normally distributed data set. If I want to add the title, I can say plt.title uh, and the title is going to be, let's say, number of houses per square meter. And then I can also add the X label and the Y label. So I can say plt.x uh, label and X label, which is going to be this one which is our bins basically, but they are the bins, let's say per uh, uh, square meter. So uh, let's say uh, square meter, uh, square M bins, and then PLT dot Y uh, label, and Y label is gonna be the number of houses. And let's just run this now. So what, what this histogram is saying to us, is that between 60 and 70 square meters, we have about, I don't know, 100 houses here, between uh, 80 to 90 square meters. So, so this is our second bit. We have about 600 houses. And then we can see that the average is between 100 to 110, which we have about almost 4,000 houses. So uh, when I say house, I mean a data point that we have in our NumPy array we've just created. Right, this is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video and you've gained enough value out of this video. And if you feel like you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna finish the rest of the tutorial, which is using pandas and matplotlib together to create plots in the second video. So please enable notifications to see when I'm gonna upload the second video. Uh, if you have any questions around what I've just shown, please let me know in the comments below. If there is something else you want me to explain better, again, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching.